This is the 2021 Jaguar I-Pace and Jaguar has done so many things right with this all-electric SUV. It's won so many awards, especially for its design. But can we say the same about the tech inside? Especially since they haven't updated one of the parts that people didn't like. Before I tell you what that is, make sure you subscribe to electrifying.com for more videos like this and every time we upload a new video so you get notified. So, the I-Pace comes with a lot of the features we've come to expect from electric cars these days. For example, you can remote lock it using a phone app. Uh, you can precondition the car. So for example, when it's the winter, you can preheat the car before you get in and you can even set it to be cool uh, for summer times. But talking about apps though, when you go through the app store, there's so many different apps available from Jaguar that sometimes it can be confusing uh, figuring out which one you actually need to download. Having said that though, when you set up a new profile on here, it actually tells you, gives you a link to download the latest and most up-to-date application for your smartphone. It's available on iOS and Android as well, so you're in luck if you have either of those devices. The iPace has been updated with the latest PV Pro infotainment system. So with the instrument cluster for the driver, you have a 12.3 inch display, which is nice and big. Uh, you can see everything visibly and you can even edit the layout. So you can change what you actually see on there, what's important to you. One thing I wish they did differently here though, is something that Audi does very well. So for example, to change the view, to change the view layout, so you have to go into settings on there and scroll through and eventually you update the settings and the layout. But for me in an Audi, at the touch of a button, you can change the view to suit whether you're trying to be eco-friendly or you're trying to put your foot down so you can see all the speed and the lighting changes and everything. On here though, is where everything else happens. So on the climate control area, you have a five inch display, which is also touchscreen and is a combination of uh, a very responsive dial here as well. But the first thing you notice though, is when you're trying to use this for the first time, it can get a little bit confusing, can get a little bit tricky. But once you figure it out, it's very straightforward. You have a push to pull system with this rotary dial system. So uh, for example, you pull to change the temperature, uh, you push it down to change the fan and uh, you know the intensity of the fan in the car. And then the touchscreen area is where you control your climate entirely. So for example, you can turn it on and you can put smart climate on as well. But what I really like though are two things. You have purifying, which means you can purify the air that comes inside of the car or inside the car already. You also have the ionizing setting as well. So uh, come summer for me, for example, when there's pollen everywhere, it means that gets fil filtered out before it gets in the car and I'm not affected. I'm not gonna be sneezing throughout my journey. So it's a lot more comfortable for myself and the passengers in the car as well. Also below the climate control area, you have a wireless charging mat, which is, which comes as an option, by the way, it's not standard uh, in the iPace. But one thing I find about that space is uh, trying to get your phone to actually sit in there comfortably, uh, depending on which size phone you have. So you either fit it from this side, so a little gap on the floating console here, and you, you get your phone in there and it starts charging. And then it gets a bit awkward trying to get the phone out at the same time. So I'm not sure what Jaguar were thinking when it comes to the design of where that wireless charging mat goes. Behind here, we have uh, two USB ports there. So there's a USB-C port and a full USB as well, which I quite like. I like that they're still stuck to the full USB-A as well because some of us still use uh, the good old USB-A charging cables. And talking about that, you can use that to connect to your iPhone as well or your Android device and you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto available there as well. Onto the main infotainment system, you have different profiles available. So you can add multiple people to use the car. Things like vehicle settings, climate control settings can be assigned to them. Uh, so my settings, my seat settings is assigned to me every time I get inside of the car. Elsewhere, we have things like camera. So we have a 360 degree camera in the car so we can view our surroundings and it also helps with parking the car as well. Or when traveling at low speeds, it also activates sometimes, but maybe if you roll back a little bit, it will activate just to allow you to see your surroundings, which is good for safety purposes. The icons are nicely laid out as well. They're very simple and minimalist. I love the design of it. You can even edit this so that you can arrange it to uh, your preference as well. So if we swipe across, you can see your settings options here. So you can do things like change screen brightness, uh, the home layout. So at the moment I've got icons as my home layout. You can also have different tiles as well in terms of home layout. Uh, but if we go further into home screen here, we've then have more options to do to edit those things. So here again, you got app tiles or app icons and you can edit that layout itself. So if you have tiles, for example, at the moment we have EV, driving style, uh, energy impact, navigation, phone and media. Uh, so those right at the top there, you can see where they are. But what we can do is then drag another one, like so. So we can stick EV there, 
You can have driving style, energy impact. See, nice and easy to use just like you would on your smartphone. Once you've configured your tiles, you can then go back to the home screen and see the layout. Uh, so then you can swipe across when it does actually work. So this takes me on to the next bit, which is that one thing I mentioned at the start that they still haven't really improved on. Jaguar said this is meant to be intuitive like you would on your smartphone. So things like swiping across should be nice and fluid, but sometimes it's just a bit laggy. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And then bam, it happens. Imagine when you drive in and you're trying to swipe across to quickly select something. That can be really annoying and that can be distracting when you're trying to keep your focus on the road. Of the many options that you have here to do with the electricity and you know energy consumption, you have the EV menu, which is very important. So if we tap that, you can see your charging information and your preferred charging period as well. So at the moment, it tells me I've got 48% battery left and my predicted range as well. If we go into energy, that then tells me my energy consumption as well, which can be useful for you to be able to improve your driving style and all that stuff. In here, we have vehicle preconditioning as well. So if we select that, you can set things like when you depart and when you get back home as well. So you can get the car warmed up, you can preheat the battery and all that stuff. Next, we have eco data. So inside eco data, it gives you more detail about your drive style and range impact and all that stuff. I really like this. I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to data. So uh, when it comes to this, you can see your drive style, you can see duration of when I've been driving, range impact in terms of things in the, inside the car, like the AC, the, the screen heating and the steering wheel heating and seat heating as well. So if I put those things on, it will tell me how they impact the range I've got left in the car. If you go into eco tips, it then gives you some tips on how to save range and what you can do to you know to, to add a bit more range to your journey which is pretty cool and then if you go into history you can see how well you've done over time again more data for you to improve your drive style and not only save the environment but also save on when it comes to range that you've got left on the car next we have voice so the same way you can control different things in the car using the rotary dials and the touch screen and stuff you can also use your voice as well inside voice you have your climate commands phone commands and if you have your apple device connected for example you can use it to control siri for example which is pretty neat to have inside of the car right you've also got settings in there which allows you to set a wake-up word so the same way you use your google assistant at home or amazon alexa devices you can also do that here so we can say something like hey jaguar when it works. Hey Jaguar. Hey Jaguar. Go to Buckingham Palace. Sorry, I missed that. You can also say help for further assistance. Go to Buckingham Palace. Choose a line number. Two. Voila. So there you have it. Once you tell it where you want to go, it sets the destination and then we can go from there. Speaking of maps, with the PV Pro, uh, new PV Pro infotainment system, what you also get with the map is it's very EV friendly. So it sets the destination, it navigates you with EV charging stations in mind. So the best ones to make sure that you charge very quickly and it also makes sure that you get there safely and back safely as well without worrying about the range in the car. Although you have an EV friendly maps there, one thing I do find those, I still find myself connecting my phone to use Google Maps. And the reason why that is, is for basic traffic information, I find Google Maps a lot more up to date. For example, the other day when I was driving, there was a roadblock. This sat navigation here in the car did not find a way to reroute me to find a different way, alternative route. So I kept going around in circles until I got my phone connected again and Google Maps was able to reroute me and find me a better route to get home. Next, we have media. So this is where the magic happens and I keep myself entertained in the car. So you can connect up to two devices at the same time using Bluetooth in the car. Or if you wanna use Apple CarPlay when you don't wanna do DAB radio, FM radio, etc., you can simply connect using your own USB cable connected to the car and you get access to Apple CarPlay. So your interface moves over to the big screen and then you can control things like your music, Google Maps and so on. So you can see they get access to your calendar, your schedule for the day. And this is where I use my Google Maps because it's just a lot more easier for me to do so. Another smart thing about the navigation in the car is being able to actually find parking spaces very easily as well. So the sat nav can actually find the nearest parking stations and where you can park that's optimal to your destination. And also when it comes to paying for parking, you can actually do that in the car without leaving the car. There's a park and pay menu, so you just have to link your profile to your parking uh, provider. For example, there's Ringo in here. And using that, you can pay for parking right in the car without having to leave the car. 
Connectivity and entertainment and all that though, it's not just geared towards the driver, it's also geared towards the passengers in the car as well. For example, you get 4G Wi-Fi hotspots, so we can connect up to eight devices to the car and access the internet. So if you have passengers in the back seat working away on the laptop, they can connect on the go and actually access the internet as well. On the back, you also get two USB-C ports, so if they want to connect their phones or, and charge their devices, they can also do that in the car. One thing that doesn't get mentioned a lot quite often when it comes to cars is artificial intelligence. So Jaguar uses AI in the iPACE to basically calculate the most accurate range in the car based on key factors like climate, the temperature, your drive style, the road conditions. And using those settings as well, they can also automate the mundane tasks. For example, you can even automatically adjust the seat settings to, to your preference based on those key factors as well, which I find really amazing. It just means the car is thinking of you and based on your journeys, it learns over time, the car becomes a bit, a bit like an extension of you. You get more comfortable when you're driving and that's amazing. Last but not least is also software over the air updates. What that means is basically wirelessly, Jaguar can send updates to the iPACE. So it just saves you the trip to the local dealership so you don't have to keep going back for updates. Everything just gets updated. Again, taking us into the future. Self-driving options are quite limited in the iPACE. Although you get plenty of safety options like lane keep assist, uh, you also get things like rear traffic alert and emergency braking, even front collision warning as well. You get emergency braking in general, which are quite great for keeping yourself safe and secure on the road. You also get uh, fatigue alerts as well. So if the driver's tired and it senses that you're driving in a very tired uh, manner, it sort of alerts you, lets you know that you need to wake up and keep your eyes on the road and hands on the steering. Whilst driving though, what I also love is that head mirror, that digital head mirror. So using the HD camera on the back uh, that's integrated on the fin and the antenna on the back and uh, that ultra wide angle lens just gives you a clear vision of what's going on behind the car. And what's great about that though is the fact that everyone that's sat in the back, if they're tall or short or whatever, it means they won't be blocking your vision or peripherals. For the parents out there though, who likes to keep an eye on the kids at the back, or if you have a pet and you want to keep an eye on them at the back, you won't be able to do that with a digital camera. But what you can do though is switch it off, a flick of the toggle, and that way you can just quickly see what's going on and it's back to just your regular mirror. One thing I do find though is once you switch it off, the switch between going from digital to manual or your regular mode goes a bit darker, which means your vision have to quickly adjust to what's going on uh, behind you. When it comes to the music in the car and sound quality, it sounds amazing too. You have Meridian audio installed in the car already, which sounds great. You've got the roof of doing all the bass and the, the tweeters helping with the mids as well. And voice clarity as well. So if you're listening to a podcast in the car, you'll be able to hear the voice clearly with no issues at all. But there are a few things I would change though, in terms of how responsive the display, the infotainment system is, for example. So when you're swiping across, sometimes it freezes, it lags. And sometimes as well, what you get is with the digital head mirror, as much as I love it, uh, the switch between bright light situation and when it goes darker, it doesn't do it instantaneously. So sometimes it's a bit jarring to the eyes. But apart from that, I think overall, Jaguar's done a good job here. So there you have it. That's the Gadgets Boy tech rundown of the new Jaguar I-PACE. As always, if you want to see the full review of the I-PACE, check out electrifying.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button and share it as well. And hit that bell notification so you'll be one of the first people to know every time we have a new video up on the channel. Thanks for watching.